Start Talk, we, what we've done is we've merged science and pop culture. So that's why my guest, I'm the host. Right. I, I'm the scientist, and my guests are hardly ever scientists. They're people hewn from pop culture. And when you do that, you, then you can, they come in with a, a pop culture scaffold, and we take science and clad the scaffold with it. And then you go home with a deeper appreciation of all the ways science touches your life. Although the woman from Big Bang Theory, she is a neuroscientist. Right? Yeah, yeah, so Mayim Bialik, yeah. who's in this current season, uh, she plays, she not only is a neuroscientist, she plays one on television. Right. So that was fun to speak to her about her arc of trajectory, because she went, she was an actress uh, before she went back to school and then got her PhD. Uh, in neuroscience, so that was fun to speak with her about this. Can people I? want oh, sorry. Okay. well, people want the real story with the science on things. So if you look at all the movies that we've seen recently, whether it's The Martian, whether it's something else, which or Interstellar, one is, Interstellar or, or the movie Gravity. Which, Gravity. Which one of these is is the most rooted in reality? Uh, can, can, I, can I boast science? for just a minute? Okay. So the author of the story that became the movie Mars, his name is Andy Weir. If you speak to him, he's an engineer, so he's writing this story about how uh, Mark Watney is going to survive bringing his scientific and engineering wit to this task. And what he said was when he was writing the story, he was imagining that I was looking over his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> what would Tyson say? Nope, nope, I got to get it right because Tyson might tweet about this. Right. So <clears throat> I, I, I think we're in a time when we can celebrate the urge that creative people have to get things scientifically right. And it's, it's a... I think it's a new era in which people are recognizing the value and role of science in our lives, but more importantly, in our civilization. Can I just ask you, I just, I, two Elon Musk questions. Any chance we're living in a simulation, as he's described? Yeah, I think uh, this, this idea came wait, wait. forth back in, in the 1990s as a philosopher, forgive me, I, I've forgotten his name, uh, who thought it, as computing power grows, we can create worlds in a computer. Wait a right. second, like we're living in the matrix? I'm getting there. I, I, I got this. I, <laughs> right, right. I, you get I, I got this. So, so if you have it's tremendous computing power, you can simulate every possible thing that could occur, right. including the neurosynaptic sure. firings in the characters that you create. So in that sense, why, what's to stop you from thinking that the characters you created are themselves real? Now, if you've created this world and the world has built into it a kind of pseudo free will, maybe those characters will say, I want to create a simulation. So then they create simulations right. within the simulations. Step back and ask, how many total simulations are there? How many total worlds are there out there? There's only one real world and everything else is a simulation. Which are you more likely to be in? I'm in the real world. <laughs> Hey CNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Here you're going to find videos packed with all of the information that you need to be smarter about your finances. You can subscribe by clicking right here and click on all the videos around me or the I right here to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.